Hi everybody, so I know it's been a while, and um, that's because it's been busy lately. I've had some things happening personally, so I haven't been able to upload um, as frequently as I like to, but hopefully um, that hasn't put you guys off watching. We are still going to go through the air because I have to return this book soon. This book is sent to me from like the Library of Congress. So I I want to get through this book first and then we're going to get through Blindsided because I get to keep that book. So I'm going to record these chapters first and then we're going to go through those. So yeah, we're on chapter 27 now. So let's see what's happening there. Chapter 27. It's bad. I lay on Aaron's bed, curling in a ball while he sat upright, telling me everything Mom and Dad didn't want to. Just say it, he swallowed. It always seems to start in the poorer provinces. They're having... They're not rebelling like when mom and dad were kids, it's more like they're uprising. What does that mean exactly? They're rallying to end the monarchy. No one is getting what they want out of the caste disillusion. And they think we don't care. Don't care, I asked, astonished. Dad's running himself ragged trying to fix it. I'm dating strangers for them. I know. And I have no idea where that performance tonight came from, but that was spe spectacular. I made a smart face. I made a smart face to acknowledging the praise but I was starting to question just how much of tonight was planned and how much of it was genuine but even then what are we supposed to do perform forever ha I scoffed as if you'd ever be able to as if you'd be asked to perform it would always be me and I can't. I feel like I'm suffocating as it is. We could all step down, he suggested. But then what would happen? Who would take over? And we would don't and we don't step down. And if you if and sorry. And if we don't step down, will they run us out? Do you think they would do you think they would do that? Do you think they do that? I breathed. He stared into the distance. I don't know. He, I don't know, Edie. People have done far worse things when they're hungry or tired or unwavery of unwaveringly poor. But we're feeding everyone. We can't make everyone earn the same amount of money. What do they want from us? Nothing, he said honestly. They just want more for themselves. I can't say I blame them, but the people are caught confused. They think their lives are in our hands, but they're not. They're in their own. Exactly. I sat in silence for a long time, considering what this meant for us. Truthfully, though, I knew it would hit me harder than anyone else if the people followed through on this. I didn't know how things like this happened, but governments changed. Kingdoms rose and fell. Entire ideology... Ideo Ideologies took over. 
shoving others to the side. Could I be brushed into the gutter? I shivered, trying to imagine a life like that. They already threw food at me, I murmured. What? I've been so stupid, I answered, shaking my head. I've grown up believing that I was adored, but the people don't love me. Once mom and dad stepped down, I can't imagine there would be anything preventing the country from getting rid of me. It was a tangible thing, like I was being held aloft by the idea, and now that I knew it was a lie, my body felt heavier. Aaron's face grew worried. Grew worried. I waited for him to contradict me, but he couldn't. You can make them love you, Edlin. You can make them love you, Edlin. I'm not as charming as you, or as clever as Caden, or as, or as adorably rambunctious, rambunctious as Austin. There's nothing that's special about me. He whacked his head on his He whacked his head on his headboard as he groaned. Edlin, you're joking, right? You're the first female heir. You're unlike anything this country has ever known. You just have to learn how to use that to remind them who you are. I'm Edlin Shree. Shrev. Shreve, and no one in the world is as powerful as me. I don't think they'd like me if I knew they knew who I really was. If they... If they're going to whine, I'll kick you out. If you're going to whine, I'll kick you out. I'll have you flogged. You've been threatening me with that. You've been threatening me with that since we were six. One day it'll happen. Heed my warning. He chuckled. Don't worry, Edie. Don't worry, Edie. The chances of people organizing enough to do anything are slim. They're venting. Once they get this out of their system, things will go back to normal. It'll, you'll see. You'll see. You'll see. Things will go back to normal. You'll see. I nodded and sighed. Maybe I was fretting for nothing, but I still could hear the hateful yelling during the parade, and I could still see the hateful remarks from my kiss with Kyle. This certainly wouldn't be the last we heard about the abolishing of the monarchy. Don't Tell mom and dad I know, okay? If you insist. I hopped up and kissed Aaron's cheek. I felt bad for girls who didn't have brothers. See you tomorrow, he grinned. Get some sleep. I left his room forever with every intention of going back to mine. But as I walked, I realized I was hungry. Now that I'd been to the kitchens, I kind of liked it down there. I remembered seeing some fruit, and there was cheese in the refrigerator. Certainly it was late enough that it was, that it couldn't bother anyone, so I trotted down the back stairs. I was wrong in assuming that it would be completely empty. 
There were a handful of young men and women rolling out dough and chopping vegetables. I took it all in for a moment, entranced by how effectively, how effect, how efficient and driven they were. I loved that, in spite of the hour, they all seemed alert and happy, chatting with one another as they were, as they went about their work. They were so interested that it took them several moments. It took several moments for me to notice the head of the floppy blonde curls in the back corner of the room. Henry had hung his shirt on a hook and he had blue undershirt and his blue undershirt was covered in flour. I moved quietly, but as the staff recognized me, they curtsied and bowed, and I passed, alerting Henry to my presence. When he saw me, he tried to brush the mess off of him, failing completely. He pushed back his hair and turned to me, smiling, as always. No, Eric? He sleep. Why aren't you asleep? He squinted, trying to piece together the words. Um, sorry, I cook. I nodded. Can I cook too? He pointed to the pile of apples and dough on the table. You want, you cook. Yes, he beamed and I nodded. No, he beamed and nodded. Then, giving me a once-over, he paused before grabbing his, excuse me, his dress shirt and wrapping it around me, trying the sleeve, tying the sleeves together in the back. An apron. He wanted me to have an apron. I smiled to myself. It was only a nightgown after all, but there weren't any, but there weren't enough words between the two of us to argue over it. He picked up an apple and took the peel off in one long strip. When he was done, he set it on the counter and picked up a different knife. I don't know how to say this word, so just be dealing with me. Pidifis. Pid. P I D A. Pidivetsi. Pidivetsi. Na. Pidivetsinin. He said, pointing to the way his fingers held the handle. He said, he turned his other hand into a claw. Claw tucking his fingers away as he held the apple. Then he started cutting. Even with my experienced eyes, I could see how he was using the minimum amount of force. He could have worked too. He could. The minimum, the minimum amount of force to do his work and how he was simply... And how he was simple, and how his simple stake protected his hands. You, he said, passing me the knife. Oh, it's a knife, okay. Probably a German word.
I also have my morning coffee. Okay, like this? I curled my hand up like he had. Good, good. I wasn't nearly as fast as he was. And my slices weren't half as uniform. But by the way he grinned, you'd have thought I made an entire feast by myself. He worked with the dough and mixed minocent. Uh, cinnamon and sugar, and prepared one of the f- the friars along the walls. I wondered if he was in charge of the desserts at home, or if they were simply his favorite. If they were simply his favorite. I helped toss the apples and stuff the dough and though I was terrified of the hot oil I did sink one of the baskets I squealed when the oil came came alive popping and dancing all over the place Henry only laughed at me a little which was kind when he finally placed the tray in front of me I was dying of hunger and nearly too excited to wait, but I did, and I, and he gestured that I should try, so I plucked, so I plucked up one of the, the, um, frittered dough, frittered donut pastry things and bit in. It was heaven, even better than the rolls. He'd made the other day. Oh, yum! I exclaimed as I chewed. He broke into a laugh and picked one up for himself. He seemed pretty satisfied, but I could see in his eyes he was evaluating what he'd made. I thought they were perfect. What are these called? Hmm? Um, name. I pointed to the food. Oh. Oh. Omenal. 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 Sorry. Om. Omen, L, Om, Um, so it's O M E N A L, and then it's like O is an accent, O with an accent, then R T S Y. Omenel, 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 Otsi, Omenel, Otsi, Omenel, Otsi, Omenel, Otsi, good, yeah, good, I smiled to myself, I'd have to tell Caden I was seriously mastering the names of several, Swedish desserts. I ate two, feeling a little sick once I was done. But then I watched as Henry passed the plate around to the cooks who also praised his skills. In the deepest core of myself, I hated that he didn't understand the words they were using. Delectable, flawless, perfection. I got the sense that if he had understood, he'd be he'd he'd have said they were being too generous. It was hard to be sure, though. That was my, that was just my assumption about who he was. I really didn't know. And I reminded myself, 
you don't want to. There were times when it was getting harder and harder to remember that. When Henry finished his rounds and the plate came back with hardly a crumb left, I gave him a shy smile. I should sleep. You sleep? Yes. Good, good. Um, tonight, the report, I asked, trying to keep things simple. He nodded. Report, yes. I placed my hands on my chest. You were so sweet. Sweet? Um, the sugar? I laughed. Yes, like sugar. He brought his hand up to cover mine as it was still pressed against us. He brought his hand up to cover mine as it was pressed against his heart. His smile dwindled as he looked at me and swallowed. He shrugged as he held me there, seeming only to want to make the moment last. He held my hand for the longest time, and I could see he was sorting through the words in his head, trying so, so hard to find one that he knew I might understand, but there was nothing. I wanted Henry to know that I saw what he felt. I could tell in every smile and in every gesture that he believed I really cared that I believed he really cared about me. And despite my best efforts, I cared about him too. I worried about how much I would regret it. But there was only one way to express that feeling. I closed the distance between us and placed a hand on his cheek. He stared into my eyes as if I'd discovered as if he discovered something truly valuable, something rare, that he might never see again. I nodded slowly, and he lowered his lips to mine. Henry was scared. I could feel it. He was afraid to touch me, afraid to hold me, afraid to move. I didn't know if it was because of the fact that I... I didn't know if it was because of... He was... because. I didn't know if it was because I was a princess or because he'd never done this before, but that kiss was so vulnerable that made me love it even more. I pressed my lips to his, trying to tell him without words that this was okay. I wanted to hold, I wanted him to hold me. And finally, after a moment of hesitation, he responded. Henry held me like I was delicate, like if his grip was too tight. I'd crumble, and his kisses were the same way. Only now, instead of being driven by fear, they were motivated by what felt like Reverence. It was an effect. It was an. Bleh. It was an affection almost too beautiful to endure. I pulled away slightly dizzy from the kiss, noting that his eyes looked pained. But he wore this tiniest smile. I should go. I should go. I said again. He nodded. Good night. Good night. I moved slowly until I was out of his sight. Then I ran. My head was swimming with thoughts that I didn't understand. Why did it bother me so much when Gabriel Gabriel picked at Henry? Why did I have to keep Fox when he had left? Why did I have to keep Fox when he should have left? Why did Kyle, for goodness sake, Kyle, keep popping up to 
popping into my mind? And why was it so terrifying? To ask those questions... When I got to my room, I flung myself into bed, feeling disoriented. As angry as I was at Gabriel for bringing it up, it did bother me that I couldn't speak to Henry, that I couldn't communicate anything intimate to him because of how uncomfortable it would be for Eric. As unnerved as the thought made me, if I was going to tell anyone something personal, it would probably be Henry. I felt safe around him, and I knew he was smart, and I admired his passion. Henry was good, but I didn't speak Swedish. I didn't speak Finnish. That was bad. I rolled over onto my back in the frustration, yelping when something dug into my spine. Reaching around, I felt that it was a knot. I was still wearing Henry's shirt. I untied it and, despite how absurd it was, pulled it on Pulled it up to my nose. Of course. Of course. Of course it smelled like cinnamon and honey and vanilla. Of course he smelled like desert. Stupid Swedish baker with his stupid spices. Stupid Stupid Swedish baker with his stupid spices. This was making me... This was making me asinine. This was why love was a terrible idea. It made you weak. And there was no one in the world powerful as me. 